Welcome back to another video, everybody. Today, a very useful tool for creating movements, for moving your viewer through your scenes using video editing, and that is what I call the lock spin effect. To give you guys some visual examples as to how this is used, we're gonna talk about some of Gibson Hazard's videos, as well as we're gonna talk about this opening scene from Snot Like Me, Ian Dior, directed by Omar Jones. Links to these will be in the description if you wanna check it out. Let me show you the first clip here. So as you can see that little sequence, using sound effects to really make this pop, let's go frame by frame and break down exactly what's happening here. We have this nice uniform spin going on here, and it's always keeping that center frame in focus here. So if you want somebody to focus in the very center of this, that's what we're gonna be locked onto. So we're gonna show you how to do that. You have a little bit of a match cut going in here, spinning of the speedometer to the spinning of the wheel. So there's another little example, and you can see how the whole scene is spinning around and keeping that wheel in the very center. So we're gonna show you things like that to bring briefly take you through some other examples. You don't have to lock this onto a tire like I'm gonna show in the tutorial. You can use this spin effect on anything you like. Here's another one in the Sean Mendes video. This is using some 3D camera spinning. And then this last example here, we have another example where we're locking onto the center of that wheel and we have that nice uniform spin, as you can see there, and using that again as a transition. So let's get into showing you guys how you can pull this off, how you can use this tool for your own works. As always, if you guys are new here, consider subscribing to learn more. Leave a like on the video if you do enjoy. It helps me a bunch with the YouTube YouTube algorithm in growing this video and comment below what you'd like to see next. Before we get started here, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Canva. Today's video is brought to you by Canva. Canva has thousands of templates which allow you to create animated posts in seconds. Over in the brand kit section, it's easy to apply the look and feel of your brand to all of these template designs. All you need to do is upload your logo, choose your colors, import your fonts, and you're good to go. Let's pop over to recommended and you can see all the different types of designs you can create. You can see you can scroll through here, find all these great different templates. I really like the look of this one just going through the left here changing different styles you can see how easy it is go to folders and we're going to add in my logo here so you can take any static image click animate and you can add in any of these preset animations so you can see the ease of use when it comes to crafting these from scratch the awesome thing about canva you have all these great free features but if you are working in a team or you want more you can bump up to the pro version here where you get millions of different templates tons of cloud storage and a lot of different tools like content planners and inviting and managing your design team if you guys are interested click the link at the top of my description to learn more all right guys let's dive right into this we're gonna go ahead and create a new composition to start from scratch here i'm gonna make this 1920 by 1080 also want to say that the larger footage you have the easier this is going to be because you're not going to have to scale as much whenever you go through and start to spin the video uh, to give you a quick example of that, if you just pay attention to the edges of this video, you see, to get that proper spin, you need to make sure that those edges aren't crossing over here, but that's not gonna necessarily handcuff you. The footage that I'm using here is from pexels.com, free link below to this if you want to try it out yourself. You can create the spin effect on any type of video. So I'm gonna right click, transform, and fit to comp. So I wanna go through here and find the exact sequence that I want, uh, this part where the car is passing by. So I'm just gonna grab this little gray bar and start to shorten that. And then I'm gonna right click and trim comp to work area. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and create our lock on effect so that we're locked onto that tire and then we can start creating our spins. This is optional again. So you wanna go up to window and make sure your tracker window is enabled. So go ahead and click that on. Then I'm gonna drag this over here so that we can see it, selecting this footage here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the part that I want because I don't need to zoom in this beginning part. We wanna keep the part we have that tire in frame, something like that. We'll select this middle clip and in my tracker window, I'm gonna click stabilize motion that's gonna put us in a layer and it's gonna pop up this track point which I can then zoom in here and we're gonna go ahead and place this on our tire I'm also gonna resize this a bit something like that and all you need to do at this point is click play so we're gonna go ahead and play this and if this gets messed up at all, we can go in and make any adjustments. You see around here, how it kind of pops off the track. If you do run into any issues like this where you can't get a clean track on something, we can go in and manually make some adjustments. So clicking page up and page down on your keyboard is gonna move frame by frame. And what you can do here is just grab this box and sort of reposition. And you see when I do that, it's moving the keyframe here. So I can click page down, move to the next frame, and I can try and keep that in the very center here. Make sure you're only dragging this box, not any of the other keyframes, and just moving through the composition here, making sure that everything is centered the way I'd like. All right, so I made all of my little adjustments, and if you go through here, 
I'm just gonna do a little scroll. You can see how my square is staying right on our tire. It does not need to be perfect. This needs to be in that general center area of the tire so that we can lock on. So at this point, all you need to do is click the apply button here in your tracker window. So we'll click that, apply dimensions X and Y, that's good, we'll click okay. And now what you guys can see is After Effects is going to move this video so that the tire is staying center. So we're gonna need to make a couple adjustments here. First, to compensate for these black edges, we're gonna click S and scale that up. And again, that's why shooting on larger footage is usually better Better because you're not gonna have as much quality loss whenever you go in and compensate for that zoom. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We're locked onto that wheel. Now let's go ahead and add in our spin. So a very important step, we need to right click on our clip and we want to pre-compose it. So make sure you're doing this. When you pre-compose, you want to click move all attributes into the new composition. Because if you look in this comp, what you're doing with this tracker window is it's animating your anchor point here. So whenever we pre-compose it, we can go in with a clean slate and we can animate our anchor point some more. So select your video you're gonna see this cursor in the very middle that's your anchor point so that's the exact point where if we do rotate that's the middle of where the spins gonna be as you can see it's all spinning around this middle anchor so go ahead in the top left and select this anchor point tool and we're gonna take that anchor point and just move that onto the tire you're gonna see as I scroll through here how that anchor point is staying pretty close to the center of our tire that's all great now whenever we rotate you're gonna see how it's rotating directly around our tire. If you need to, you can also add a tiny bit of keyframe. Any of that gets a little bit offset. So now let's go ahead and add in our rotation. So at the beginning of our clip here, we're gonna go ahead and toggle on the animation for our rotation. So go ahead and click this keyframe button here under transform. Now we're gonna scroll all the way to the end of this clip and we're gonna add in some rotations. So this is a pretty short clip. So I'm just going to add one full rotation. So where it says zero X, we'll change that to one. If you have longer clips, you can add more rotation. It really just depends on the time of the clip. So now if you press play here, you're gonna see how we have that rotating directly around our wheel with our wheel in the dead center being locked on. So that's perfect. Now we just need to compensate for these edges. So we're gonna go ahead and add some scaling keyframes here. So we'll click on keyframe for scale. We'll move a tiny bit. And with all these black edges, you just wanna bump that up so that those are no longer there. You have something like this. And then if you have anything going on like that, you can also keyframe position it's already on so we can just move that over a tiny bit or you can scale it up a tiny bit you just want to make sure that your edges are staying outside of our frame here and there you go as you see we have our locked on spin but we need to add a few more touches here to make this look a little bit more realistic it looks a little bit too jittery a little bit too forced so let's add in some realistic motion blur here to really sell that spin and give it that more fast pace speed effect so to do that you have some of these switches up here you want to enable motion blur for your composition and then to specifically enable it for your clip, make sure you're clicking this toggle switches and modes button so that you can see these little switches. And then for our clip here, we're gonna enable motion blur. You guys will be able to see the difference if I toggle that on and off. If you wanna change the motion blur at all, you go up to composition, comp settings, go to advanced. Under shutter angle here, if we crank that up, you're gonna see how it adds more motion blur. So if you want it all crazy, you can put it up like that. Or if you want it a little bit more relaxed, you can bump that down. So I'll keep it at around 280. And then we'll let this play, get a little render buffer. And there you go, guys. You have your fast, action-packed spinning locked onto anything in your scene that you like. You can lock onto anything in your frame or you can completely ignore the lock on part and just add in those spins with the anchor point trick and adding that motion blur. For example, in this Gibson Hazard video here, go ahead and play this and I'll turn on the sound so you can get a good idea of that sound effect. So there you go, just using a little spin here to transition into another scene. So again, use this tool however you'd like. I think it's very powerful. It adds motion into your scenes, like I said at the beginning, and you can use it in a variety of ways. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like. Again, comment below what you'd like to see from me. Most of these videos all depend on the comments you guys leave. I hope you guys have a good weekend. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.